Hello aspirants, looking at current affairs for 6th November, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these nine, we'll look at them in detail. The first one, Prime Prince's Ministers Arrested in Saudi Arabia Purge. So we know the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Muhammad bin Salman, we have discussed him earlier too, he has I been mean, undertaking reforms in the Saudi Arabian nation and now he has established this new body anti-corruption body and this anti-corruption body has taken up cases against top businessmen, billionaires and even princes in Saudi Arabia. So they have been arrested as such. So this is also seen like a sweeping purge which is an attempt by the crown prince to consolidate his power in the kingdom. He has undertaken various reforms. He has taken, undertaken social economic reforms in the ultra conservative Saudi Arabian nation and also his, his initiating reforms for a post oil era because Saudi Arabia has been dependent on an oil economy and now reforms have been undertaken and he wants to consolidate his power here and we are seeing various arrests taking place. Also, another point is that this new anti-corruption commission is actually looking into cases which are old cases like during 2009 when floods devastated Jidda region uh, a city in Saudi Arabia so this such cases have been initiated and around 11 princes are reported to have been arrested action taken against them even for current ministers and dozens of ex-ministers have also been arrested also, various high-profile sackings have taken place, means they have been removed from services like Saudi National Guard head, even the, one of the leading contenders to the throne and the Navy chief, and even economy minister have been replaced. So, this is the news coming from Saudi Arabia. So, here you can see the details are also provided. So, this is the Crown Prince Muhammad bin Salman. He is the eldest son of the king. And now he has been named the crown prince two years ago as such. And now he has brought in various social and economic reforms giving women rights like right to drive in Saudi Arabia which was barred for women earlier. So he has taken up reforms also and now he is consolidating power as you can see. Then next is. Worried over farmer suicides, Orisha sets up special teams. So, farmer suicides are taking place in Orisha. We have seen that suicides of six farmers have taken place within a fortnight, in 14 days. So, Orisha is in alert mode and it has reputed special teams to counsel farmers to refrain from taking such extreme steps. There have been crop losses, especially because of pest attacks and the government has actually set up an agriculture cabinet as well uh, chaired by the chief minister Navin Patnaik himself and is going to discuss various issues with respect to this also special relief commissioner has said to farmers that they would be compensated for crop loss due to pest attacks just like they get compensation during floods and droughts so they don't need to take such extreme steps it's been highlighted by the government and steps are being taken in 2015 actually in Odisha around 200 farmers committed suicide because of crop loss and then the loan burden which falls on them so paddy crops are being affected due to pest attacks in around 8211 villages in Odisha right presently so this is a matter of alert which is being looked into by the Orisha government here. Then next is President calls for a time bound plan to reduce crop wastage. So President of India, Mr. Ramnath Kovin, he has spoken on crop wastage in India. This is with reference to the World Food India event 2017 which has been going on and in this event delegates from over 60 countries including CEOs of 60 global companies had were in attendance and even the food minister, food processing industry minister claims that 50 MOUs worth 11.4 billion dollars have been signed. So food processing industry is one area which has huge potential. The president says there is limited, a limitless opportunity here. It can be a huge employer too. It has great potential for women to emerge as micro entrepreneurs and even raise the level of female participation in the workforce. For example, there can be enterprises, small enterprises to make jams, pickles by processing fruits and vegetables gathered from their farm and villages and such micro enterprises can be established by women as well. 
So food value addition, this is an area which needs to be explored, which is again been highlighted by the president too. Earlier we saw the prime minister speaking in detail on this aspect and now the president also gives the viewpoints. Then next is Bangana Palle Mango gets GI tag. So this Bangana Palle Mango is from Andhra Pradesh. It has got the geographical indication tag as such. So this GI tag is one which will certify that the origin of the product or produce from a particular region is, is because of which it has a particular quality or feature. So because of it being from a particular geographical region, it has this quality attributed to this place of origin. So that is what the GI tag signifies. So this GI tag has been provided by the Geographic Indications Registry of Chennai. So this Bangana Palle mangoes have been grown in Andhra Pradesh for over 100 years and once this GI tag is given then it will result in farmers and manufacturers getting better price and recognition in markets as well. So the fruit it is said claim that it can retain qual their quality under cold storage even up to 3 months. And it has it is known for its skin which has very light spots. The stone is oblong in shape, very thin seed which is there and soft fibers are located all over. So it is known basically for its sweetness. So this is also exported annually to various countries like USA and UK. So they have not got this GI tag. Then next is India-Ukraine panel meeting falls through. So there was a meeting scheduled India-Ukraine intergovernmental commission meeting and this meeting is not taking place as such meeting was scheduled for 1st November. It got cancelled at the last moment. The reason being given from the Ukrainian side being scheduling problem. So the deputy PM had pressing engagements and he could not attend. So this meeting actually was going to cover about commercial and cultural ties between the two countries. All the draft protocols have been prepared by both sides but the meeting eventually did not take place. Now they are saying that they would like to hold the meeting by February 2018. So this uh, meet actually would also had draft protocol agreement would have also is also looking into defense and other political issues of mutual interest. Now another speculation which is there is that maybe Russia had its concerns because of which the meeting was not was has not taken place because even the Ukrainian side clarified that there is no pressure from any country including from Russia against the meet. So this is there but then we know that Russia and Ukraine are, are you know in war mode uh, they have been in conflict for several years now after the Crimea region in Ukraine which is having Russian majority so it has been annexed by Russia as such too so the ethnic Russian population here is in majority and the troops you can see the Russian troops have taken over this region after the referendum was held here which said that the people wanted to rejoin Russia so Russian troops have annexed this Crimea and also there are pro-Russian protesters protesting in these regions in Ukraine. Also you should know that Ukraine was part of former USSR. USSR comprised of 15 nations basically present day nations and once USSR disintegrated these 15 new nations have been formed. The largest amongst them being number one this Russia. So these nations in Europe. European continent also which have now we also become members of European Union like Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania were earlier part of USSR and then this is Ukraine and this is Crimea and even the Asian nations like Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan all these were part of former USSR so there were 15 nations there are 15 nations present day nations which earlier formed USSR which got disintegrated in 1991. Then next is center plans to set up more commercial codes. So we have already seen that in World Bank's ease of doing business ranking, India has gone up from 130 to 100th rank. So 30 positions jump which India has seen is of huge significance and now the central government wants to further improve in various parameters, around 10 parameters based on which World Bank has this ranking done. So here enforcement of business contracts and you know legal remedies to commercial disputes is also 
are also parameters here which world bank considers and that is why union government proposes to establish commercial courts in districts to further improve these parameters so there will be amendments to facilitate establishment of commercial courts at district level even in places where high courts have original civil jurisdiction so commercial courts will actually also the value of commercial disputes will be specified value will be brought down so that the scope of commercial adjudication is further expanded and that would result in quick expedi you know, expeditious com completion of these cases because of which our ranking here would also improve. So for this amendments would be required which will be initiated by the government. So this has been highlighted. So commercial courts at district level for dispute resolution so commercial courts act will need to be amended also the limit specified value is of uh, as such will be less than one crore now. that is being proposed then next is navy to use u.s aircraft launch system in ship so this is regarding the indian navy's second indigenous aircraft carrier so the first indigenous aircraft carrier which is presently in service is INS Vikramaditya which is Admiral Gorshko which has been leased from Russia and now the second indigenous aircraft carrier which is been you know uh, which has been developed as such is INS Vikrat. So this will be actually be the first domestic carrier. So here actually what kind of aircraft launch mechanism needs to be put in place is being looked into. So Katobar which is catapult based aircraft launch mechanism which we have you know taken which we are proposing to be procuring from us is being looked into however there is an advanced system too which is emails which also us is ready to provide us which is electromagnetic aircraft launch system so emails is better than Catobar because Catobar is steam powered and this is electric motor driven catapult and even more heavier aircrafts can be launched with emails but then it will be expensive so these factors need to be taken into consideration and navy has to decide which system it wants for its second indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant which is set to be launched by 2018 end. So the two countries are looking into this, a joint working group between India and USA has been formed on this matter, Aircraft Carrier Technology Cooperation under the DTTI, Defense Technology and Trade Initiative, which has been you know, in place between India and US. So discussions are going on on this. So here you can see INS Virat was the earlier aircraft carrier which has been decommissioned in 2016. So the only aircraft carrier which we have now is INS Vikramaditya and INS Vikrant is being manufactured. It is being built presently. Then next is missiles from Yemen intercepted in Riyadh. So Saudi Arabia has intercepted and destroyed a ballistic missile near Riyadh's King Khalid International Airport. It was launched from Yemen. So Yemen and Saudi Arabia are also on war and it is the Houthi rebels which are backed by Iran against whom Saudi Arabia has launched this war in Yemen. So they have launched this ballistic missile which has been intercepted and destroyed. Such instances have taken place earlier too and these Patriot surface to air missiles which have been purchased by Saudi Arabia from US are being used to shoot down these Houthi missiles. So this also shows how the conflict in Yemen is a threat to Saudi Arabia as well. So the proxy war between Riyadh and Tehran actually means it is Saudi Arabia and Iran which are in war. Saudi Arabia is Sunni majority and Tehran Iran is Shia majority. So this Sunni Shia conflict in the region which is there, the war which they are fighting is actually not on their territory but in Yemen, another country which is facing the brunt. So this war in Yemen, the Saudi-led coalition began its intervention in 2015. So you should know about this Saudi-led coalition. You can see Yemen is the nation here bordered by Saudi Arabia and this is the Shia majority region and this is the Houthi rebels controlled area in Yemen. Even Al-Qaeda has become present, has, has increased its presence in Yemen presently. This is there. And the Saudi-led coalition which is fighting this proxy war in Yemen is of course Saudi Arabia and adjoining nations you can see here. Even USA is providing logistic and intelligence support in this war in Yemen. 
Morocco, Egypt, Sudan, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, UAE, and likely even Pakistan may join in was expected. So this is that. Then the last news item is INSV Tarini on a second leg of circumnavigation. So INSV Indian Navy sailing vessel INSV and INSV Tarini. It is on a voyage titled Navika Sagar Parikrama, which began in Goa in September 2017. We had discussed it then too, and it is going to complete the circumnavigation. Means it's going to navigate round the globe by March 2018. So this is actually a 55 foot sailing vessel. It is, it is, uh, it is having an all women crew of six members, and it is going to have five legs of its voyage, in which it will have four stopovers at four ports. The first stopover took place at Fremantle, Australia. Second is in New Zealand, then Parkland, South Africa, and then it will come back to India. So this INSB Tarini, which is indigenously built and inducted into the Navy in 2017 itself, has initiated this circumnavigation of the globe through a six women, all women crew. So this is. So these are the news items. Thank you.